So in this week's um, update on our models, uh, first, it's, uh, there's been an important change in some of our assumptions about vaccination uh, and the effectiveness of vaccines. We periodically review both the published clinical trials and also the more numerous post-vaccination studies that have been coming out. And this week, we've uh, incorporated another round of that information, including studies in Canada and Scotland and England and Israel, which suggests uh, two important findings. Uh, first, that the vaccines are probably more effective than we previously had assumed in preventing hospitalization and death, um, even against the Delta variant. So the mRNA vaccines, probably 90% or higher for uh, hospitalization and death. And we've upgraded quite considerably the estimate of AstraZeneca's effectiveness against the Delta variant for preventing hospitalization and death. In contrast, I think the evidence continues to suggest that vaccines are much less effective at preventing infection, and that's included but we have not yet included in our modeling the evidence coming out of Israel that uh, vaccine effectiveness wanes considerably over time from second dose for preventing infection, not for preventing severe disease and death, which is the good news. But in terms of controlling transmission, that waning immunity matters a lot, and that should be in our model in, in the next two weeks or so. So uh, that makes our models slightly or somewhat more optimistic in countries which have heavy use of AstraZeneca in this week's release. The other important directions that we're seeing uh, in our models is that we've been forecasting uh, peaks in a number of the Delta surges, for example, Indonesia, and uh, that peak has now occurred and numbers are coming down. And we also forecast uh, you know, peaks in the near future in Bangladesh and likely in Pakistan, uh, which contribute, uh, you know, which are, are good news if, if the model turns out to be correct. And so far, we've been tracking it reasonably well in the countries where we have predicted these peaks. Uh, there are, uh, you know, important changes in our forecasts, for example, in the US, um, <clears throat> where we are seeing the current Delta surge continuing uh, with deaths starting to rise and unfortunately rising uh, into the beginning and middle of September uh, with cases perhaps reaching uh, a peak sometime in August and then starting to come down rather slowly. So we do expect you know, a period of ongoing um, increased transmission challenges as schools open in September during a period where transmission is either intensifying or still very high. In other parts of the world, we're seeing the continued decline in transmission in South America, and that's in our forecast as well. They continue going down in terms of daily cases and deaths, but we're seeing this steady uh, surge in Mexico continue to unfold. And because vaccination rates are, are quite a bit lower in Mexico than in, for example, the US, uh, that, that is associated with considerable death, uh, unfortunately, in the next months. In other parts of our forecasts, um, we are having a hard time understanding the peaks that have occurred in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom uh, and in some parts of Spain, while at the same time we're seeing continued expanded surges in other parts of Spain, in Italy, in France, in Germany. Uh, and so it's a very mixed picture. Uh, and these sort of unexpected peaks, at least in terms of the drivers that we have in our model, are, are making us really wonder what's the transmission dynamics behind these abrupt reversals that we saw in those particular countries. So we'll want to track those very carefully in the weeks ahead. Um, one theory behind it is that transmission was mostly in younger groups and was very intense and has actually infected most people in those younger age groups. And so you've run out of people to infect and in, in older age groups are more vaccinated and also more careful. But that's just a hypothesis and we'll have to see if, if evidence uh, backs that up. 
I'd say in general, one of the phenomena that we're seeing as we push our forecasts out to December 1st, as well as you know, anticipating our forecasts into the first quarter next year, is because there's a lot of people that have been infected already uh, in many countries, particularly those places that have had bad epidemics. And there's now a big body of people that are also vaccinated. Uh, we start to have quite a substantial fraction of the population that are immune, even taking into account immune escape and, and you know, impartial effectiveness of the vaccines against infection, even taking that into account, we're up in the high 50s in some countries, percent of the population that are immune, and that'll go up to about 70% by December, for example, in the US. And what that means is that uh, we are now anticipating that the winter surge in the Northern hemisphere may be smaller than we previously thought it would be. And one way to think about that is that the Delta surge is, is, is infecting enough people earlier such that those infections have now sort of moved earlier in time and we'll see less of them concentrated in the winter. Uh, in, in, then that may put less pressure on hospitals when they experience a flu epidemic this coming winter if the COVID uh, surge is, is um, you know, more spread out over time due to the Delta variant. So super in, important, but quite complicated interactions here, especially as we get closer in many countries to a much smaller fraction of the population that can get infected. Um, so all things that we will want to keep tracking in, in these in the weekly modeling updates uh, as we look farther and farther into the winter.